And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigaro. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the LEO Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021. Quite the roller coaster ride today, I'll say, in the S&P and in the NASDAQ. Uh, more pronounced in the NASDAQ, but nonetheless, the markets did not follow through on what I had uh, laid out on yesterday's update. In fact, I believe that I had left it with the possibility that I put the four here, but we may move it uh, unless the market really picked up and started to go down. And I had put down a, a brief possibility of what the count would be. Uh, well, as I got started into uh, the Globex session, it did pretty well. And then somebody walked in and just said, nope, and they bought it up. And that was that. So that broke that entire, um, or it negated that little mini count inside that wave and led to the balance of today, full of tons of uh, quick runs up, runs down, a major run up, and then a major drop back down, a major run up, and then you know, on and on. There was uh, one announcement today that the Chinese government had processed or worked out a payment uh, for the ones that were due tomorrow, I believe. That's what the news was. Well, that sent the S&P soaring up to 4402 before, again, returning all the way back down. Then the Fed came out with their uh, meeting after the meeting, and the market ran all the way up, then ran all the way back down, and then ran all the way back up before coming back in and settling uh, for the day at about 43.86. Now, the, the moves themselves were very profitable if you happen to be on the right side. They were very sudden moves, they were very fast moves, and normally done up and down within a minute. And I joke you not. So it did become somewhat of a roller coaster ride. And depending on where you were sitting during that particular moment, if you had no position, you were fine. If you had a long position, the first one, when they just came in on the news of the Evergrande, it just ran that market up and boom, you made your money, surprise money. And then the market came all the way back down. So you could have made surprise money on the way back and then also just make that money on the way back down uh, because the market just shipped gears. If you were short coming into that unknown announcement about the uh, Chinese government helping out Evergrande, then you got smacked pretty hard because it moved very quickly. It was just a spike up to 4204. And that uh, would not have been very pleasant. So instead of possibly making 1000 or 1200 or $1,400, you lost 1200 or $1,000 or $1,400. And that just happened to be the way it was today, at least in the S&P. And then again, once the uh, Fed made their numbers, it gets real squirrely. That's the word I'm going to use. Uh, during that period after, because everything is electronic right now. So if you're some big traders got to come in with a large buy and or sell order, and they don't kind of cross each other along the path, then suddenly you get to run up and you get to run down and you get to run up and you get to run down. Then you get another run down, but you get to run up. And it just gets to be, uh, the appearance is extremely um, herky jerky, I call it. It just kind of Zips up, zips, zips down, zips up, zips down. And those are very difficult to trade for obvious reasons because they happen so often within a few seconds within, of market time. And also within that, if it's just kind of a kind of a rogue uh, move, you know, it's just like one time shot and the lack of follow through, really, if you're trading similar to the way I trade, uh, day trade, you're trading the, the price action and you're trading as one bar, you're expecting 
a follow through on that bar for the next bar. When you get a very, very strong engulfing bullish bar up, well, the anticipation would be that, boy, that really kind of went. There should be some additional uh, propellant or rocket energy or just market energy to that side. And as it happened, that did not occur. After that initial, like, boy, they got bailed out, great, there was nothing. Then came two very strong cells. Now, again, it gets all the way down here and you're thinking, oh, okay, that's a strong candle down, but then it comes back up, puts in what appeared to be uh, like a 50%, little bit of a retracement back up, preparing for the next li uh, line down or the next move down or the next subsequent you know, basket of stocks or uh, futures coming in and hitting the market. Didn't happen. Shifted and ran higher again. This made it much more difficult to trade. Um, I, for one, I will be honest, because I'm a human being, I was up nicely, then I was down, not ugly, but I was down enough to tell me to stop. Uh, because I don't particularly care to continue to not be in the groove of what the market is attempting to do. And it's best just to kind of pull back, stop, or switch to another account, or do something that's going to pull your attention back out of the market so that you can step back into the market and trade more clearly. Um, when, when I, as a trader, and most that I know, when we are in sync with the market, then we are pretty much following the ebb and the flow. And we aren't necessarily looking for reasons for the ebb and flow because quite frankly, there, there are a myriad of reasons people move in and out of the market. But I prefer to just be able to get into the groove of what the next five minutes or the next two minutes or the next you know, few bars are really going to tell me. And when you get these large bars up in the morning, they're they normally are going to have follow through. That bar straight from this was yesterday. And it actually happened late in the afternoon. So you're looking for follow through. So there's the first bar up. There's the uh, just the counter, just gonna selling a little bit. But then as soon as it broke right there, there was your next bar up. And <clears throat> this of course is going to late afternoon, but it's the same principle. You know, you get the follow through. Same on the downside. You get this nice up bar, boom, as soon as it comes there and starts to turn red, you get in, it turns into a larger move. And this one may have rallied back, but when it came back down and broke that, it's in, you're in. So there, there, there's plenty of follow through. They're not showing up um, like red, green, red, 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 green, red, red, green. So they're more in sync with the follow through. And that's often when you reach a, a moving average or they reach a support level, then you get that change. And you usually can get a signal as to when that's gonna happen. But okay, enough about just the intraday trading, which was more problematic today, but plenty of opportunities. I gotta say, in all honesty, there were plenty of opportunities. Let's get to the open right here. Um, again, this is an hourly chart. I'm just gonna break it down. Let's go to the 15 minute chart. So I can demonstrate that a little bit cleaner. The market gave us plenty of opportunities. Here is today's opening. This is a 15 minute bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine green bars up on a 15 minute chart. That's extraordinary. That's power. That's the power of the buyers. They came in, they, weren't going, they were relentless. They weren't going to let go. In fact, you barely got any pullbacks to get in. There they were available, but you had to get in. All a lot of money made here, including myself. Then didn't do, I did okay here, got caught in this, got caught in that. And in those types of moves, you can truly lose everything you've made thus far. So instead of being up, you can turn and be down. And it's just getting caught in these unpredictable, just out of the blue 
You know, you're looking for additional follow through. This was such a, a, a great rally. You're looking for more follow through and it did. So from there, it ran up four more points. I was looking for more. I was looking for an additional bar about that size. Well, you know how it came? To the sell side. Then we had an engulfing all the way down. So it was, it was a strange day. But the good news is, and what I will come back and say, you never lose, you, you set a daily loss limit. And you, this is something else that you have to honor. So a little bit of trading talk here. You have to honor your daily loss limit because it protects your account. If, you're, if, if your goal is that you want to make $1,000 a day, then I would li live with the goal of you don't lose more than $1,000, but you don't want to live with that because if you're, if you're up 1000 you don't want to lose more than 500 So you still go home partially in the green. So you work, each individual works that out for themselves, but I, I do believe in having a, a, a daily loss limit so that if you reach that, it's, there's something going on. Either you, you've stepped out of the now, so your focus is gone, you're out of sync with the market or something is happening and it's preventing you from trading as possibly as you know how you can do it. That was what happened to me today. I just fell out of sync with the market and that's okay. These things do happen. And I like being able to tell folks about it because it's important. It's an important thing to share and it doesn't make me vulnerable, it makes me human. So on the human basis, you, you're gonna get caught up in things and, and it just, it really can throw you off track. But recognizing that made me say, no, I'm stopping, I'm stopping for the day because I wanna come in and trade tomorrow. I wanna come in and I can make that money back today, tomorrow. And then I can double it on Friday. So understanding who I am as a trader is very important. So each one of us has to understand who we are as a trader and how we handle uh, bad days. They don't have to be endless. They don't have to be just like get knocked, get knocked, get knocked, get knocked because you've got to make it back. You got to make it back. You got to pick a point where you're like, I'm going to stop for today because I want to come back tomorrow and I can make this money back and I know how to trade, et cetera, et cetera. So those all come in on a day like today. And again, it was two announcements. The Evergrande announcement, that's the whole reason we dropped like a stone yesterday. That was the reason that we got so much of our downside. Um, so just being able to continue to play moves like that. And then today, having that news of like, well, we worked out a payment plan. Well, that was a big relief because suddenly everybody's like, oh, well, it was always reason went down. So now we don't need to go down. We can buy. And that's pretty much what they did. And then the Fed news, however they wanted to interpret the Fed news, that they're going to have to start to taper a little bit on the stimulus payments and the stimulus money that's still left to go out. They may pull that back. That's not going to, that's going to hurt a lot of people that are, are dependent upon it right now. It uh, doesn't mean the crisis is over. It isn't. It means that the money crisis isn't over. And that they're going to have to start to taper and raise rates. And now they're pushing it up to next year. That's a little bit of a relief, I think, for the market. But there's a lot of things in and going on behind the scenes that we're just not aware of. And I don't know if the Fed or anybody else wants to really talk about it. But I digress. So trading big news days, trading important numbers, you get swings and volatility in all directions. It can really destroy your day trading skills or it's gonna help improve your day trading skills because you're gonna to have to become a really quick and fast and accurate scalper. And when you're gonna step into a market that's moving very quickly, you've gotta pick your point and you have to know I'm getting out. And so if you wait too long, you're down 1200 1300 1400 1500 dollars and i do mean that sincerely it can go that quickly now back to what we actually did today as i had left it i had left it that this could have been the completion point for the minor wave four and then we were going to count what looked like could be starting as an a, a one two one two 
and then the beginning of a stronger decline in a third wave. So it would be wave three of minor wave five coming down. Well, that changed. I'm basically right here. And I was having a little bit like, what the heck was all this nonsense? This was a series of ones and twos, but then it stopped. And so continue, this would have been the point it's like, oh, you break and you break hard. And they did, they bought it. And I think this was on the fact that, that this is Asian markets open and they had already received news that, that Evergrande had made their payments that were due um, today, but in, in the Chinese today, which was at six o'clock Pacific standard. So that they embraced and that just kind of kept the rally going overnight. And then boom, 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 we come in and do it today. And then we finally get the news right there that, that what's been done for the payment for tomorrow. So I'm now looking at this whole thing still as a corrective move. So let me just pull this open. What this is right here, there's the end of minor three. So we're still on a minor fourth wave. And that's the A, the B, it all fits. And then we're getting a C wave up, which I believe is complete. One, two, sloppy. This is uh, basically, I think that's the three. Uh, and this is all four. I'm coming down here to complete the four. And then we have a five. This actually might've been one, two, one, two. Uh, let me see. Three, four, five of three, four. So that could have been, you know, but still a C wave. And I'm going to put the minor four here. That does not actually mean it is complete. And I'm going to take this back out. So we can look at it on the 30 and get a bit a bit of what's behind it. Now, if the market continues to embrace all of this wonderful news today, then here's where it can't cross. If it crosses 4425.25, so we're going to give it all the way up to 4426. If it breaks about that level, then it negates this count. And it's basically going to leave what we have done so far off of the all time highs up here. It's going to leave it as a three wave structure down. Now, whether that's going to be an A wave of minor. Four, an A wave of, of for, excuse me, of <clears throat> minor A, intermediate A. Because remember, still, this is fives. These completed. I'm still satisfied with that. So we're looking for an ABC structure. I'm just giving you the possibilities. The market will tell us. But now we have to have a little bit more of an idea of like what and what it can and cannot do. So, uh, that remains a possibility. Now, I think this is still very corrective. Now, what could change that in a heartbeat is overnight, and then again tomorrow, we just keep it going. It just breaks above that high at 44.06 and just keeps going and breaks this level, 44.33, which actually will come after for 44.25. So 44.25, because that's where minor wave one sits. And this is minor one, two, three. So this minor four cannot, cannot enter the price territory of minor one. And that's where it will come in. And you can see we got close. We're still close. So for tomorrow, if this is indeed going to be a minor fourth wave correction complete here, then we really do need to see the sellers come back in. Take all this news and realize, hmm, doesn't really change anything. We're still going to go down. And then they start to hit coming off. And we break through the 50 and we start heading down and we break below this low at 43.21. Then we break below that low at 42.93. Then we do start getting down to areas that we've been looking for uh, pretty far down. Now again, here's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to now re reintroduce those retracements, that retracements, the extensions that we had on yesterday. So we're going to put them up here. And now we look and we see that 618 barely comes in at a new low below 42.93, but good enough. So if we get it to come down to 618, that's a common place or a common relationship between a fifth wave and a third wave, that the fifth wave will be 0.618 times the length of that third wave. But then we have additional. And the second most common is that the fifth wave will be equal in length to the third wave, and that brings us down to 4221. So yes, I'm still gonna count this as a, a minor fourth wave for right now, until the market tells me different, which it could do overnight and tomorrow morning. Again, a break above 4406 opens the doors for an additional rally up that could take us closer to 44.23, I believe that there is some uh, resistance right around 44.15 to 44.20. It could get there and still be acceptable. It just cannot break 44, right, there you are, 33.25. Can't break it. I mean, it can, but then it's no longer a fourth wave. Then we're into this. We have three waves down, and now we're working much stronger three waves up. Um, and we'll see where it goes. The pattern and the structure so far, mm, it really would have to have already started to, ex to extend. Can do it overnight, though, so that's why we're going to keep it open. In lieu of that not occurring, and we continue to move lower, then I'm looking for these levels. And this one ultimately, again, though, I will say if minor wave five really starts to extend within itself, then we do have these lower levels as well. And I think we had them all the way down to, well, now it's about 4,036. So today's upward trend uh, to finish a C wave did bring this up about, actually about 40 points. But I think yesterday it was at 3,394, now it's at 4,036. That's 40 points. So we did get a change in our levels. Not too bad. So I am still looking. But right now, I am still looking for downside to complete a minor fifth wave. And then I'll go from there again as to what that label will be. And that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. And our next update will be on Thursday, the 23rd.